This is the detailed build along of a pair of Roman Gladius swords. It was an opportunity to try something different. I haven't built these type uh, or this type of swords and and I wanted to try something new. Um, try laminating contrasting pieces of wood to make the blade out of and then when beveling the blade um, hopefully that would show through. So the center core is going to be some yatoba, uh, sort of a reddish, dark reddish wood, and the outer is this thinner hickory. And, you know, the, the hope being that the, the hickory is a little wider and, and will contrast with the dark red of the center. So these were glued together, um, pretty straightforward. It, again, the, they're not the same width, the, the outer is is really quite thin. The inner uh, Yatoba is probably a quarter inch or so. And the outer is just an eighth of an inch. So with that ready, I, I plan to make two of these, one that with just a straight blade and one with more of a leaf-shaped blade. So with that leaf-shaped blade, I created some templates and printed them out so that I'd have a guide to follow. And just making sure it's the correct length so that I glued it or taped it all together correctly. And then I could trace it out. Another thing on this build, uh, another reason it took me longer than, than maybe it should have, is I wanted to make a number of templates so that uh, potentially I could build uh, more of these down the road if, if I wanted to. So here I'm not actually marking these out on the the blade blanks that will be. This is just uh, making some templates. And in all honesty, I think this was about the third pair of templates I made. Um, the others turned out to be a little smaller than I wanted to use, so. Um, but that, that base, uh, the tang of the blade, use the table saw to make sure those were good and straight. Because again, this will be the template that I'm using for potentially others in the future. So this one's the leaf shaped blade, cutting these out on the bandsaw to the line and then uh, cleaning them up. For the straight template, I could just clean up that edge with the hand plane until I get a nice long shaving and I have a good straight edge. And the leaf shaped blade could just sand it down a bit. With the templates ready, easy to trace them out. I'll trace those out and rough cut them on the bandsaw again. And this goes really fast because I'm not trying to get close to the line. I'm just getting uh, clearing off some of the waste so they can then use the the router uh, at the router table and and template route these to the final shape. For the straight blade, I, I used some brad nails. Um, depending on what you're doing, sometimes when I've used double-sided tape, it doesn't work as well, but in this case, the brad nails were causing more problems, so I did use double-sided tape for the second one, and that worked out really well. It, it was fine. So if I do make them again, I won't, I won't use the brad nails. These are made uh, long enough, the tang is long enough in this case, it's going to go through the pommel and the handle, uh, I'm sorry, through the guard and the handle and the pommel, all the way and, and join everything together. So now I'm just cutting all the small pieces that will uh, make up the different assemblies for the, the handle and the guard and the pommel. Those will get glued up um, so that they'll fit around that tang. Uh, but for the the guard, it ended up, especially for that central core piece, I shouldn't have cut these down. I originally thought, well, I'll cut these down and then cut the pieces out of them, but I should have left that longer, and uh, that would have made it easier to cut these out on the scroll saw 
to have a longer piece to work with. Oh well. So these, in this case, again, I'm using uh, templates. I'm creating some templates so that it'll be easier to create multiple of these, even if I just make the two of them. But here you see that little tiny piece that I'm going to be cutting out, and that definitely would have been better if I had uh, left those as a longer piece. But for this, I just cut a few of them and it worked out fine. Now for gluing the handles together and the other uh, other parts, I thought, you know, it makes sense to build a small box that I can just stick these in and then clamp them all together. So I was going to build this little um, quick box, but I was a little careless with the first one and ended up as I tried to put the back on this that um, it wasn't square, it wasn't coming together right and I didn't want it to mess with it, ultimately the handle so in the end it, the only thing it was good for was practice because I need practice <laughs> so second, second try this time and I'm cutting the width of this to match all, pretty much exactly with the, what the handle width should be. And I cut two pieces this time for a top and bottom. And then I'm going to cut out uh, a slot in the middle uh, for clamping. So drill halfway through with the Forzner bit. Drill all the way through with the small bit and then drill from the other side and to make the clean hole. And then I cut this out with on the scroll saw. So this worked out a lot better. And could quick put that back on. And I made another one of these as well. Uh, a little bit different, but you can see this is how it's supposed to work. It's it's fitting really tightly at this point. It doesn't quite work, so I did trim down the side pieces uh, for the handle a little bit, but in the end it, it uh, got it to work out all right. And finally, before glue up, I did use some packing tape, and I spread packing tape all over the inside. It was, it was kind of a pain to work its way in there, but it's important so that the glue doesn't stick to your... your uh, box. It works out really well so you can clamp these things in here for a good long time and then pop them out pretty easily. But here's that other box I made. It's just a simple, um, I think it was three inches wide and that fits both the guard and the pommel. So this tall box I will glue up the handles. So you can see I got the sides and just stack them together and I've got a little, little uh, piece of wood that's the same width as the tang. And that helps to keep it separated. And then I can clamp and glue these together. So I glued up four of these just thinking, because I, I hadn't tried this type of handle before. So I glued up a couple um, so that I could have a couple to play around with. And again, it, it, it doesn't all work perfectly, but in the end it, it did... Uh, it, it worked out really well. A little tight and some. Some of them were a little tighter than others. Which is funny. You you cut all these things exactly at the same time. You think they should all work. And then, you know, just tiny little differences. But gluing up the guard in that case. And now gluing up the pommel. Making sure that it will all fit around that tang. So I can glue up two of these at the same time, and two of the uh, the guard at the same time, and make sure you clean out any glue, squeeze out before it dries. So it's a lot of prep work up to this point, and then finally after it's it's the glue is dry, now we can finally start to shape. The different parts. So here's all of the rough block parts 
they fit well they're gonna go together fine so now we get to finally shape them this is where it's really it gets a lot more fun shaping all these different parts uh, before this you know it's sort of just a lot of like I say prep work you're getting everything ready and glued up and now you shape it and it goes faster and you get a lot of uh, feedback it's this, this is the fun part when cutting this out at the bandsaw uh, it was definitely a good thing to grab some clamps to hold it I did try to hold it by hand um, but it's, just, it's too hard to hold on to and a little too close to the blade for my comfort so this worked out a lot better I'm just rough cutting it because I'll turn the final shape on the lathe and same with this one I'll sand the final shape down so just rough cutting uh, the the main edges off same thing here we'll use the sander the um, orbiting sander to really f do the final shape here but you can cut off the uh, starter process there so then the sander again so cleaning up the sides and I'm also using that sort of gummy thing to help clean up the sander as I go because uh, it's definitely getting a lot of dust in it but really you just start shaping it So it took a little bit of time, but uh, it worked out pretty well. I wasn't sure how this was going to work first time. I tried this particular type of handle, but it, it did work out well. And then I could throw it uh, against the sanding mop that I made a couple weeks ago. And I made two sanding mops actually in different grits, so I could uh, take it down and then uh, had a finer sanding mop. And it cleaned up really nicely. At this point, it's fun, it's sort of, uh, you keep testing it, even though it, it, of course it's going to work, you'd still put it all together because it just, it's satisfying to do so. And finally, I'm routing out the, the blade channel to expose that inner core, that inner wood, and see what that contrast looks like. Now, in this case, it does come out, but it didn't, it, it didn't have as much contrast as I thought it would. Hickory, the hickory boards that I'm using, you'll see, um, some of them were a little darker, some of them were a little lighter, so the contrast varied, but it was a kind of a fun experiment. Um, depending on the wood you use, it would definitely show up more or less. And then shaping the guard, I cut a you know this little piece of wood, and that really helped to manipulate. Is it that, those smooth edges definitely be hard to hold on to? So this worked not only here, sanding and getting the, the curves here correct. This also made it much safer to take it to the router table and route a nice uh, chamfer uh, on both ends. You could clamp this, um, but that would, but you'd only be able to, to do a little bit at a time. But I, I just, it'd be really unsafe to try and hold this uh, with your, <laughs> hold this by yourself. So having that slot and that little piece of wood definitely helped to make this viable. Even here, uh, sanding it down and cleaning it up, I did get a little tear out when I was routing these but they turned out really nice and finally it's the pommel that's left so throw just a little throwaway piece of wood in there to help chuck it up and then turn it down and I'm just turning this into um, a sphere uh, almost almost a, a pure sphere I ended up putting just a single embellishment in the center, little ridge, but that's all. 
this this contrast as well because the handle is made of hickory and the pommel and the guard are made of the yatoba so that will contrast as well and before final glue up just put everything together everything fits together really well so it's time to glue it up You just try and clean up the glue as you go. Nothing, nothing complicated here. And I don't clamp these together uh, in any way. I, I don't know if you would have to figure out some way to do so, but I haven't found it necessary. So there's let gravity hold them in place. Let the glue settle for a little bit and then it's time to put a finish on. Which of course is very exciting after all the, the time you put into it to see how it all, how that wood grain comes out and how it's gonna look. Again, the, the, the blades on these didn't end up having as much contrast as I had hoped for, but certainly the, the handles did. Um, they they turned out really just lovely. The leaf shaped blade actually had a little more interest in in the the wood grain, but overall I was just I was thrilled the way these came out. I hadn't tried making this type of sword before. I thought they turned out really nice. It was a different way to make the handle and a, a fun experiment to try on the blade. So just a fun build. Thanks for watching.